Just a quick tutorial here talking about how to change the speed of uh, an animation that you've already keyframed. Um, one way to do it that I think people uh, commonly do is to scale the keys, uh, which is very easy to do. You can just go to the timeline, and if you select the summary track, then you can just uh, drag the bar at the top to scale the keys in and out. Um, that's well and good, except in some situations, like in this case, where you have keyframes that are very close to each other, and you want to scale the, uh, you want to speed the animation up by scaling this down. Uh, what can happen in that situation is that uh, some of the keys end up getting lost when you scale because they just can't get any closer together. Um, so if I run the animation here, I'm just going to hit play. It's very simple. You just got these three objects moving, and then in this, uh, these quick back-to-back -back keyframes, they sort of rotate in a snap-like fashion. And that's it. And they come back to the original spot. So let's stop, go back to the beginning. Uh, so what if I wanted to scale this down, say let's, let's have all of this occur within the first 39 frames. Keep an eye on these, uh, these uh, bunched keyframes here when I do this. So if I scale these down to frame 39, whoops, there. You'll see that the, um, some of the keyframes have either, uh, I don't know if they've been deleted, I guess they've been deleted, but there. So now if I run the animation, what you'll see is that they're, the objects are actually rotating the entire time because you know the uh, initial sort of non-rotating keys have uh, disappeared. So let's undo that. And fortunately, there's a, a way around this. And uh, one way to do that, and actually has a lot of purposes, is to use the time track. So I'm going to select the torus here. I'm going to go to the timelines create menu, and go to Add special tracks, and the first one is time track. Now, the time track, if I go into the F curves and look at it, you'll see it's just a uh, linear line. It's got two keyframes, one at 0% and one at 100%. You can see the values there. Um, what this controls is, as you would guess, the time of your animation. So it's going to basically, if I assign it as the curve is here, it's not going to change at all because it's just going to go from 0% up to 100% and it's going to run through normally. So let's see what it does by applying it first of all. I'm just going to select, um, we don't have scale but I might as well apply it anyway. It's going to select all these properties of the torus then I'm going to take the, uh, I'm going to click on the time track and just drag it into the time track field up here in the attributes manager. Um, so that's great. That'll control the torus. But what if you have, you know, maybe you know dozens or even a hundred objects in your scene, and you want to control them all with one track? Well, luckily you can do that with a single time track. So let's go. Now that we've applied it there, let's go and just select the cone, and I'm going to shift select the cylinder, and I'm going to do the same thing. Now you could do this with as many objects as you wanted. Obviously, you can also apply it to individual tracks. You know, if I unselected, say, scale. In fact, we might as well, since we're not using scale here. Um, I'm just going to drag the time track up there. Okay, so now let's go into our time track again. And what we want to do is we want the whole animation to complete by frame 39. So let's just go up to frame 39, and I'm going to control click uh, on the curve, and you'll see that uh, it's a spline type curve right now. And so is the first keyframe, I think. So let's double click on those. And I'm going to change that to uh, linear. And what we need to do is just select this new frame at key 39. And you see the key value now is at 43.333. Let's just change that to 100. And that should do it. Now if we just run the, key, the animation, You'll see when we get to frame 39, it's complete. Not only is it complete, however, but we also have those little sort of snap rotation. So you can see that the sort of double keyframes, the back-to-back -back keyframes, were not uh, destroyed by using the uh, time curve. Now, obviously, you can you can uh, use this for other purposes as well. You can uh, refine your animation. You know, the, the entire animation 
of multiple objects just using one F curve by adjusting uh, these keyframes. So for instance, if we go back here and switch this back to a uh, spline. Um, so now I can, you know, I can, well, I think I have to turn off lock tangent length. Uh, so now I can sort of adjust the speed, uh, the ease in, out, ease out, and uh, do any number of things. So now if I just go back and run it this way. So the time track is actually a very powerful uh, function of cinema, something that uh, you should get familiar with if you're not.